Good evening. Welcome to our online worship for Christmas Eve, Midnight Mass at Home. Wherever you're watching this, whatever your time you're watching, if you're tuning in at half eleven uh, to watch it on Christmas Eve or sometime later, it's great to have you joining with us as we worship God together, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus together. Well, sadly, this year we're unable to be in church for Christmas, so we are having to do things a bit differently. Uh, so we're celebrating Midnight Mass at home. Uh, in order to help you uh, as you worship this evening, you might want a couple of things. One is a candle uh, to light at the beginning of our service. Uh, we light a candle together to remind us of the light of Christ in our lives and remind us that wherever we are, God is with us. And secondly, we're going to be taking part in a short act of communion. So to do this at home, you might want some bread and some wine uh, to uh, take part in this act of communion at home where you are. But I'm going to begin by lighting my candle now. And so you might want to light yours at home. And I'm going to begin with these words of welcome and the words will appear on the screen, so do join in with the words in bold. I bring you good news of great joy. A saviour has been born to you, alleluia. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, alleluia. And so as we begin our worship, let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and our minds. And we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. So let us turn to the light and confess our sins. God our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect the special prayer for today, for Christmas Eve. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light, bring us, who have known the revelation of that light on earth, to see the radiance of your heavenly glory, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
This is the reading from Isaiah 52, verses 7 to 10. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen, lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Thanks be to God. This is from the Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man who was sent from God, whose name was John. He came for testimony, to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. I think it's safe to say that for probably many of us watching, we'd rather not be watching Midnight Mass at home on YouTube, but would rather be in church. Uh, we'd rather be seeing Christmas in with others. We'd rather be celebrating Christmas with friends and family. And this Christmas is going to be a difficult one, uh, and it comes at the end of a particularly tough year. A year that has been marked by fear and uncertainty. Of course, as this end the year ends and a new year begins, a lot of that fear and uncertainty isn't going away. We have this new strain of coronavirus that is causing a lot of anxiety. Uh, we have Brexit and the uncertainty about what that means for day-to-day -day life, what that might mean for businesses. Uh, and of course, we have the long-term uh, consequences of the pandemic. Uh, what might that mean for this country, for people throughout the world? We're living in a lot of fear and uncertainty at this time. And in the midst of this comes Christmas. Christmas has a habit of coming uh, no matter what is going on in the world. And it comes in a season of particular uncertainty. And our reading, uh, our gospel reading in today's service, I think speaks quite powerfully in this season of uncertainty and speaks to us uh, in a powerful way. If you cast your minds back to the beginning it began like this in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God all things came into being through him and without him not one thing came into being now, this might seem quite a strange way to begin a book which is primarily about the life of a person what is the writer of John's Gospel saying here well for a number of ancient Greek philosophers at the time the word that John refers to signified uh, the underlying rationality that they saw in the natural world the seasons the life cycles the fact that plants depend on light and animals depend on plants they saw that uh, as an underlying rationality to the world which they called logos uh, which is a Greek word and we translate it as word but it's where we get things like logical from and what John is saying here is that that there is a name to this 
underlying rationality to the world. That it's not some kind of abstract rational order, but there is a name, there is a person behind it. And that person is God. God is the one who created the world. God is the one whom through whom all things came into being through. And as the creation story in Genesis depicts, it was out of chaos that God created order and beauty. What John is saying is that, that this world that we see, everything that we can see, taste, touch, smell, the whole universe, all of this has its origins in God and was created by God with order and purpose and in love. The fact that we exist today, uh, that we are just you know, the right distance from the sun with the, just the right amount of light and heat to sustain life and just the right, mind, right amount of gravity so that we don't just float off in the air, um, that we have this kind of order pattern to the world, all of this points to the fact that, that the world has been created by God with order and with purpose. But most importantly, it has been created by God in love. And the purpose of the world, the purpose of our lives, is to have a relationship with our Creator. Which brings us to Christmas. Because, as we know, in the world, whilst there is so much beauty in the world, there is also so much brokenness. And while there is some order uh, and pattern to the world, there is also a lot of chaos and there is a lot of suffering. But Christmas is the time when God entered into our world to restore the order and the beauty that he intended. And what John is saying is that while there is a lot of darkness in the world, while there are a lot of things in the world, while we might feel that uh, we're going through a particularly dark time, while there is a lot of darkness in the world, the light has come and darkness cannot overwhelm it. Now this uh, Christmas there's been a renewed focus on light. Uh, I think as we've uh, been experiencing a pretty dark year, people have wanted to uh, experience more light. Uh, the houses have been lit up more than I've noticed in previous years. We've had in Leytonstone the, the light up Leytonstone uh, a couple of weekends and of course the church has uh, been washed with light the last few weeks. Light is of course as well as something that brings joy and happiness is fundamental to life. We need light in order to live. And Christmas is when the darkness of the world has been met by a greater force of light. It's been met by a greater force of light bringing hope and bringing back to the world order and restoring the world to its beauty that God intended it to be. Christmas marks the day when, when God entered into the world to make all things new again. Christmas marks the day when God uh, began his restoration project to the world. And the promises of scripture is that God will eventually make all things new. And there's a wonderful picture in the book of Revelation, right at the end of the Bible, where there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And in that new earth, there will be no more pain, no more suffering, no more crying, and no more death, because the former things will have passed away. This is the promise of scripture, the promise that God is in the world, restoring the world back to what he intended it to be. Now when things do look uncertain, when there is a lot of chaos, when there is a lot of fear, uh, it's tempting to respond. A natural reaction is to respond with anxiety. Sometimes that can spill out into panic. But Christmas tells us 
that there is a third option. There is another way of responding to all the uncertainty that we see in the world. And that is to trust. To trust that underlying the order that we see in the world, the beauty that we see in the world, underlying all of this is, is a God who created the world in order and with purpose and in love and has come to restore that order and to restore the world and to renew the world and uh, deal with all the pain, all the suffering that is in the world. Christmas tells us that while we might be fearful, we can place our trust in God who has all things uh, in, uh, holds all things in the palm of his hand, even things like a global pandemic. Uh, and eventually God is making the world new again. Eventually God will deal with all the pain and suffering in the world. And Christmas tells us that it is already happening and it already began in Jesus Christ. And the writer of John said that, that he was privileged to witness, to see this word becoming flesh. And they saw him full of grace and truth. And so Christmas is an invitation to renew our trust in God, to place our faith in him, and to remember that in all the uncertainty in the world, in all that we can be fearful of, there is a God who holds the world in the palm of his hand. There is a God who loves us. And there is a God who has come to save us. And he came to do so in this baby, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Let us bring before God the needs of the world. Wonderful Counselor, give your wisdom to the rulers of the nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, make the whole world know that the government is on your shoulders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting Father, establish your reign of justice and righteousness forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, bring in the endless kingdom of your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Lord, hear our prayer and fulfill your purpose in us as you accomplished your will. In our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
We're now going to share in a small act of communion. Uh, if you want to take part uh, and do an act of communion at home, you might want to get some bread and some wine. And as we share in communion, we also remember the Jesus who was born to be a saviour, died and suffered on the cross in order to save us from our sins. So the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks because in the incarnation of the word, a new light has dawned upon the world. You have become one with us, that we might become one with you in your glorious kingdom. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together together for that day, when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And so as you eat your bread and drink your wine, do so in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Let's pray. God our Father, 
In this night you have made known to us again the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Confirm our faith and fix our eyes on him until the day dawns and Christ the morning star rises in our hearts. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. A reminder, all our services are online, so we meet again at 10.30 tomorrow morning for Christmas Day uh, and on Sunday the 27th uh, for uh, an act of worship at 10.30 again. Uh, we also have after church coffee on Zoom on both Christmas Day and Sunday the 27th. Uh, if you uh, want to get the details from that, do contact, email myself, vicar at stjohns-laytonstone.org.uk and I can send you the login details for that. Let's be close. Let's close with a final prayer of blessing. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with peace and goodwill and make you partakers of the divine nature and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always and especially this Christmas time. Amen.